Say hi, JJ. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Last time I saw you, I could not find my passport and luckily I ended up finding it. But in this episode, we're gonna chat with Jay about what it's like to have an interable relationship, his side, his feelings on things and how we just manage Jalen in our family and how we're figuring this out together. So then we're gonna also eat some dinner. So separating mom from business and work is honestly really hard. I try my best to be off by like 4.30, be home by 5 when I am out. That's like my goal. And then between 5 and 7 is my time where I try my best to do no phones, no computers, like no screen time, no TV because it's my time where I get to connect with her and hang out and play and do everything I can to like bond um, while being a working mom and running businesses and have my own career and have my own goals like I feel very blessed that I have a lot of support around me that I can do both but it is really hard but I think I'm just like more so scared to regret working too much and miss out on things with her but I also really want her to see that like as she gets older mommy's a badass and mommy can do anything and yeah I want to build this empire for her to see. I think more so I miss out on experiences with Jalen that are because of my disability. Um, I'm, I wish that I felt 100% comfortable taking her out in public by myself. I don't. Um, I do everything I can to have someone with me, have my dad with me, or have my friends with me, or have Jay with me when I do want to leave the house with her. I don't feel comfortable going out in public with her. I feel so vulnerable. Um, I think just being a mom in general, but then adding the level of disability and not being able to protect her scares the crap out of me. Um, there's so many things that I feel like I've missed out on. I mean, just going to Disneyland and having her fall asleep on Jay and not me is something that I wish I could experience. And having a disability and like and a little one there's there's a lot that I think I've had to like mourn of what it's like to be a mom I didn't know you know I didn't know I'd be doing this with a disability and so there's like every day there's something that I'm like oh can't do that or oh it's easier for you know she wants to be held but she doesn't want to sit on my lap like she's in that phase of wanting to be held but if she's sitting on my lap she just we call it they she just planks and she just wants to get down and she doesn't want to sit on my lap but then she'll be held by anyone and everyone else um and it's just i'm learning that it's just like part of the process of her being a toddler i mean not to be all sappy and sad but there's a big part of motherhood with a disability that isn't shown or isn't talked about but there's also a really beautiful side of it too that like I'm trying to find that balance of like appreciating the small moments while also not getting jealous about the fact that I can't do a lot of things by myself and I can but it's just not the way that I envisioned and I'm mourning that and experiencing it every day. Oh my god. Darn it. I think it's like every mom you know you have like your moments where you like I don't know, designate time to like feel things because if you feel it in the moment then like I don't want her to see me like you know always like be upset but it is really hard but there's so much that I can do with her that like I always try and like focus on but yeah it's hard <laughs> like just even going through the process of like, yes, like giving birth and then like the recovery process and like finding your body again and while also still like raising a child and then building a career and sustaining a career and then keeping people employed and like a marriage. When I gave birth, it was like I was re-paralyzed because I lost a lot of my mobility and a lot of my independence and I went so long 
being so incredibly independent with my disability and then all of a sudden like I lost my whole core like all of my core I couldn't I couldn't get dressed by myself and then even now like being independent going to the grocery store I'm like wait I have a child that I'm scared to take to the grocery store so now I'm relearning how to just live my life with a disability it, it like changes every single aspect of it but but as far as dance I'm I feel like I have to force myself to dance right now because one I feel guilty when I'm not with her like she'll she's always in the back of my mind and two, I want to build back the strength that I, I've lost. I think my, my biggest thing for anyone watching this, maybe you're a new mom, maybe you're a mom with a disability, maybe you're a wheelchair user, a mom with a disability, you know, I think my biggest thing is to, one, understand that you're not alone. Two, understand that there's so many people out there dealing with the same things that we're dealing as mothers with disabilities. Um, three, find your community, whether that's family, whether that's friends, or whether that's people on social media. Um, and also, I really feel that that no matter like how how deep you feel in this and how like alone you feel, finding your sense of what your passion is again and rediscovering that I think is so valid and I think it's so needed and also being patient with yourself. I'm trying to remind myself to be patient that I'm gonna fall back in love with dance the same way and it may be and it may look and it may feel a little different but it's just part of the postpartum. It's part of becoming a mom and finding yourself again and everyone feels this. I also try and I try and uh, play on the ground as much as possible oh, with her. My shoulder is really bad still, but uh, Jay's here, so he's gonna have to help me back up. But we love to play on the ground with mommy. She loves to stand on my chair. Let me, let me break this, there we go. She loves to sit in my chair, it's literally the cutest thing. Well, up, got it, scoot around, okay, here we go. So recently, Jalen decided to try and climb the dresser. And it's crazy because literally maybe two days before that, I saw a video of, of what can happen. And uh, I was like, oh, we're gonna have to do that eventually. Two days later, she decided to try and climb the dresser. So now Jay is going to be bolting the dresser to the wall because safety first. Hot tool, Dad. Yeah, there you, do you, what is that? Are you just like, I, like to take things apart to figure out how they work and see if I can put it back together. Um, and so I just, I like doing stuff with my hands. I mean, literally everything that you see in this nursery, I just did, you know? Um, my dad taught me and I'm, if I didn't know how to do it immediately, I figured it out. Um, Chelsea and I were kind of discussing how we can adapt the crib to make it accessible for her. Um, do we split it 50-50 down the middle? put hinges on both sides? Do we do a 70-30 and only hinge one side? One of the coolest things that I didn't consider or think about was getting to experience things again for the first time through her eyes. I mean, even just like the little things like when the Winnie the Pooh song comes on, you know, and how much she lights up. For me, like a year ago, I'd been like, what the heck are we watching Winnie the Pooh, you know? But just to see her excitement from it means the world. Yeah, you, know? you get to see her do her little thing. Yeah, yeah, and just it it reminds reminds me to like slow down and like a lot of the things that we go through on a day to day basis as adults like yeah. couldn't mean less to her, you know. And uh, I mean, I get emotional just thinking about it. Like she's awesome. No, but she's. Uh, She's definitely changed us for the better, that's for damn sure. I think Jay and I have learned that we are both very independent when it comes to our careers and building our careers, we're really passionate about it. So how we kind of divide and conquer to help raise a child is honestly different every week. We usually will do like what's our non-negotiables like that week. If I'm like, hey, I have an event or hey, I have rehearsal, hey, I have X, Y, and Z going on, then we go through like what's our non-negotiables for the week. 
Um, and then we both have like our kind of like our parent duties that we both kind of handle. Like Jay does a lot of the, you could say like heavy lifting. For me, I'll do more of the like logistical planning. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's working so far. So far, so good. Uh, but definitely every week is so different because my schedule varies every single week. So it's really just kind of a go with the flow. We try and have as much structure as possible, but we aren't the kind of parents that are like very strict on schedule. We're not by the book all the time. Yeah. Whoa. You good? Are you okay? Okay guys, so obviously this is my husband Jay. You guys probably know of him what? through my social media. So we're gonna just chat with you guys a little bit about what it's like having an interable relationship, um, the raw, real side of it, and how we handle it. Because a lot of you guys see on social media one side of it, um, but you know, there's also another side of it that is really hard. And I feel like, what do you think about splitting the workload and like you doing a lot of like the heavy physical lifting stuff and like what I do and how do you feel like we balance that? I mean, I think we balance it pretty well. I mean, there's there's things initially that were a little tough to have to like just accept like, hey, this is, this is my role. Like you're never gonna be able to take out the trash cans. You're never gonna be able to pick up the dog poop. Like. So that's just things that like I need to step in and just know that that's it. Like that's something that I need to handle, you know. Um, taking out JJ's like diaper pail. Like he likes. I don't know. There's just he likes to call it. I deal with all the shit in the house, and I'm like. <laughs> trash and poop. That's my that's my duty. Like that's that's what I do, you know. But I mean, there's other things that like you you do like planning. Um, Making sure that we like the house is always stocked with groceries. Like there's, it's a it's a given and, give and take, and um, I think with any relationship, it's just finding a a balance and what what works for you and what you can do. And definitely like the original spark that we had um, has definitely changed. Definitely is still there. Like I still love this woman with all my heart, but. Um, as we grow and enter these new stages of life, like it re reignites old fires and um, it starts new ones, you know? Like seeing her be become a mom has been a completely awesome experience and watching her <laughs> experiment, <laughs> raise JJ to play with these shoes. Like, I mean, it's just things change, you know? Um, as as we get older we change um but getting to do this with her by my side is uh one of the best things ever thanks yeah i feel like you know they always there's this funny saying of like the spark and like the intimacy dies after having a child and like i'm gonna be honest yeah it does and it sucks. It's hard, it's hard to find the time. It's so hard to find the time and to the even energy. just have a conversation <laughs> of like, how was your day? We get the, how was your day? It was good. It was good. And then there's screaming like, or there's crying or there's, where is she? What is she doing? And, and then JJ screams and cries. Yeah. Not just me. <laughs> but like, it's, it is really hard to find that like spark again. The first diaper I ever changed was Jalen's. I didn't even know how to change a diaper. Jay learned how to change a diaper in the hospital. Like, we're just figuring it out. And our relationship has taken a backseat the last 16 months. Um, we have not focused on each other until recently of really being able to, like, make time for just the two of us. And that is, it's so hard to do when, like, she comes first. But the saying of, like, our relationship has to come before the baby is so true because if him and I aren't good, then she won't be good and then the three of us won't be good and then it all comes crumbling down. And that's something that we're like rediscovering. I mean, they say you gotta put the oxygen mask on yourself before you help others, right? Yeah. So when Chelsea and I first started dating, it was honestly something that I didn't anticipate, but honestly, I feel like it 
made it so much more special. Um, even my mom was just like, wait, you're dating a girl in a wheelchair? I'm like, no, I'm dating a girl who happens to be in a wheelchair. And she's fucking amazing. <laughs> and so, um, I didn't even really think about, like, all the things and that I would have to do, whether it's loading her chair in and out of the car, picking up the dog poop, taking out the trash, like, oh, you forgot your makeup inside, or you forgot your phone inside, and I have to run back <laughs> in and out of the house because it's not easy for you to just get out of the car and run in and do it. But, like, I, I'm in love with her. I'm in love with you. Man, when you love someone, you just do it. Yeah. And you just overlook all, like, the little bullshit that comes. And it's not always easy. Um, especially trying to wrangle a 16-month-old. It's definitely not easy, but there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Because, I mean, every relationship, disability or not, it has its own... Trials, tribulations, struggles, pains, um, joys, successes. Um, so, I mean, it's once you find your person, disability or not, you're going to do whatever you need to do to, to make it work. Yeah. Um, and I truly feel like I have found my person, disability or not, and there's not a thing I wouldn't do to make this work. So um, for anyone out there that's questioning, oh, I saw this girl that happened to roll by in a wheelchair or this girl had a cochlear implant because she couldn't hear or um, whatever, whatever the case may be, people in general aren't perfect. But you find a way to make it perfect. But I think also, too, it's interesting, like, yeah, you can fall in love with someone with a disability, but can you grasp handling it and loving every second of it every day for the rest of your life? And I think that's something that, like, is really scary for people with disabilities is, like, yeah, you can date and, yeah, you can hang out and you can hit it off with someone, but, like, is that person going to stick around? Is that person willing to, I mean, in my eyes, I've always felt like, is someone going to want to deal with this for the rest of their lives? Like, yeah, I'm really independent now, but like, what about when I'm 50 and I can't transfer by myself? And what about, you know, if there, if I can't do my bathroom stuff on my own, what happens then? Like, what if I can't shower on my own? Is he going to be able to put himself aside one day and deal with that? And I say deal with that because like, I don't know how he's going to take it, but, you know, we're married, so he has to now, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> and it does take a very special person to be able to put themselves aside and still love me through it, you know? So. I mean, in, in all honesty, like, I would be lying if I didn't, didn't say, hey, I, like, what would life be like if you were walking? Like, would we even be together? Yeah. You know, but we... I hope we would find each other. Oh, I would definitely find find you. <laughs> um, but, like, I'm so thankful for everything that we have, for our daughter, for you, yeah. for the life that we have built. It's not easy. It definitely, I mean, it's it's not easy, but it makes me happy. Me too. <laughs> um, I'm getting hungry. Do I'm you, starving. You want a dinner? Let's get dinner. Right. Yeah. I love you. I'll get you better. You're going to eat first. You're going to eat first. You want to grab some food? I'll grab her high chair. Yes. Come here. All right. Arms up. Arms up.
You want to buckle? This is literally a lifesaver. These pasta, little pre-made meals. The literally the best thing in the universe. You ever have a kid? Let's get some snacks. This is what we are making today. We're gonna crush it. I think you're gonna. We're gonna do well on this. Here you go. Okay. All right. Make sure you blow on it. Mm, Gotta make sure cheese. she's sitting while we eat because, or while we cook, because she likes to grab everything off the table. So I, I don't follow instructions on a regular basis, but um, it always generally comes out pretty well. Um, Chelsea, on the other hand, I can give her this recipe and let her do it herself, and it's anyone's guess on what will happen. I'm just being honest. No, I literally will mess it up. <laughs> I will. Get me cooking classes. I've, I've tried to teach you. It's not a matter of cooking classes. You won't listen to me. I could well, literally. Well, actually, no, maybe we should get you cooking classes. Yeah. Since you won't fun. listen to me. That would be fun. That's the uh, ginger. What do I do with this? Peel ginger and grate using a zester. My favorite. Do you, do you want me to do that? No, it's okay. I'm a big girl. Are you sure? Yeah, I use this, right? Just. Sure. Right? Whatever it, whatever the it means zest to you. It? Yeah, whatever it means to you. Oh my God. Do I do the whole thing? Yeah. What side? The side with the skin or the? Well, you got it. What Do I peel did, off the, the skin? What did the recipe say? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Do I peel it off? No. No, just explain to you me. I'll do it. You gotta shave it. You okay, gotta... I'll let me, then let me do it. Okay, so you're gonna take this and you're gonna take the outer layer off of that and then you're gonna mince it. Okay. God. I'll be working on my, my french fries over here. Oh, see, okay, I got it, got it, got it, okay. I have something for you. What? Do you trust me? No. Try this. It's good. Fuck is that? <laughs> no. Eh. Okay. You just gave me raw ginger? I mean, was it good? No. <laughs> All right, guys, so that is it. It's time for y'all to head out because mommy mode is turned on officially. So I will see you guys in the next episode. You got to get out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon in the next episode. But you got to go home. Got to go home. Bye-bye. See you later. Thanks for watching. All right, so a lot of you guys think the Rolettes can just dance. But that's not true because today we're playing basketball. Huh. Two, si se puede on three. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Si, si se puede! You see our team, our team captain Connor? right there? Connor? Do not be messed with. Oh! Go Connor! <laughs> <laughs> oh. You were 